And you may live to be 70 or 80 or 90 or 100 years of age. But your spirit, your soul, that part of you that will live forever, either in heaven or hell, that part of you is dead, dead toward God, and it's sinful. And that's the reason you need forgiveness. That's the reason you need for God to come along and justify you. You, did you know that tonight before you leave here, you could be justified before God just as though you had never committed a sin? That's what the cross is all about. That's what the resurrection is all about. That's what the blood of Christ is all about. Jesus came to give himself to you because he loves you. And when he died on that cross, God laid all of our sins on him. He became guilty of murder of lying, of adultery, of greed. All the sins that you and I have were laid on him. He voluntarily did it because he loves you. God loves you. There are many words used in the New Testament for sin. I'm not going to try to use them all. One of them is turning aside from a straight path. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, said Isaiah. In Romans 5, it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Thus, a radical change must take place before you can get into heaven, before you can be accepted by God. And that change can take place tonight to find true or real fulfillment even in this life, that change must take place. To be acceptable to God, that change must take place. Now, what is this new birth when Jesus said you must be born again? Nicodemus asked that question. He said, how can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter his mother's womb and be born again? He wanted to understand Jesus indicated, the Bible indicates, that we will never understand all these things. We'll never understand all the mysteries of God. We come by faith. Nicodemus could only see the physical and the material, and Jesus was speaking of the spiritual. When Jesus said, you must be born again, he didn't mean that you're going to inherit it. You don't inherit salvation from your father and mother. The Scripture says in John 1, 12, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I could be born in a garage, but that doesn't make me an automobile. You can be born in a Christian home, but that doesn't make you a Christian. There has to come a time in your own life when you make your own decision and your own choice. And then some people think they can come 